Becoming competent at BIM is much like running a marathon. It's about taking one step at a time. We don't become competent overnight, just like we can't run a marathon tomorrow if we haven't done the necessary training. And if we look at the London Marathon, whilst we'll see the elite runners, they're running for a living, but there's plenty of the general public that have risen to the challenge and they've been able to do so because they've been following a training programme. And so it is with BIM. Anybody can become competent at operating in a digital environment, but we can't expect to do so from a standing start in a few days. So there are steps that we need to take in order to develop that capability. In construction, we operate in many traditional ways, and a lot of what we do still involves a lot of waste. Now that's not material waste, it's actually waste that doesn't add value to the customer. So we need to understand these different types of waste. So for example, all the contradictions and errors in design information that result in rework, or paper delivery tickets that get lost and suppliers don't get paid, all these types of waste need to be eradicated. You've got to firstly understand what BIM means to you. It's the important starting point. It means different things to different people depending on where you are within the construction process. But ultimately, we're all looking to operate in a more efficient and effective way. The starting point is to recognise that a lot of what we do uses information that we've either created ourselves or we're using from others. And I think it's about the information that we use again that's really important. How much time do we waste looking for the same information over and over again? So before you rush into anything, I think it's prudent to take a step back. Have a look at what you're doing and see how you can operate more efficiently. And that may be part of a strategic management process. However, if we just want to take an example and just look at one process, then it's looking at what you've got to do to operate digitally and whether you've got the capability to do it yourselves, whether you need to bring in some help or you've got the internal capability. And if you haven't got the internal capability, well, what's stopping you? There's plenty of help available and there's plenty of people willing to help you. It's incredible the amount of people out there. You can go to the UK website, there's plenty of information there. The uh, BIM regions are all around to help and there are plenty of BIM4 groups that are also offering help and advice. So operating in a digital environment is constantly evolving. I don't think there's a book that you can pull off the shelf that says this is how you do it. So we need to develop a continuous learning approach. We're not going to get it right first time every time. And to a certain extent, that's where you're going to get your best learning from. And with that mindset, you're going to make much faster progress, not just within your own organisation, but also with external stakeholders. So the digital environment is constantly evolving, as I've said. Companies that have already started are taking a competitive advantage and are doing well. If you don't start now, then you are likely to get left behind. So where do you start? Well, part of this is, as we've said, go back to the marathon analogy, put your trainers on and start running. You're not going to be able to run 26 miles tomorrow, but you will be able to run a mile. And I think it's the same. Pick up one process, start doing that, start improving that and then look at doing another process, much the same way that as you build up the marathon capability, you'll be able to run five miles within a few weeks. There aren't really any shortcuts to this. It's about developing your own competence one step at a time.